video, origami can provide researchers insight into protein folding, which can, in turn, help us defeat the virus that's causing this worldwide pandemic. But what does origami have to do with viruses? So after I finished my master's degree last year, I had all these sheets of paper with printed out drafts of my master's thesis. Now, if I was a regular person, I would have recycled them. But... Well, that didn't happen. I realized I had a unique opportunity to make one of the biggest origami structures I've ever attempted. And after realizing it, I just couldn't pass out that opportunity. As I was working on my first few units through a structure that looks eerily like the coronavirus, I had made up my mind to go to grad school to do research in origami. It seemed like fun and matched my interests. But after getting into the lab and talking with the people in the field, I realized that it was so much more than just fun. Origami has a lot of practical uses, from building micro-robots, which is what our group is currently working on, to figuring out how proteins fold. And that may just help with this pandemic. Here's the most basic rundown to protein folding. And this is where I pause past Alice to comment that she does not have to show and tell talent she thinks she does. So current Alice that's editing this video will do the commentaries for you, okay? And I am so gonna mess this up, but let's do this. Well, you at least knew you were gonna mess it up. So you start with a chain of amino acids, which can spiral up into helices or find other chains to form sheets, or even form a sheet by itself. After these helices and sheets are formed, they can fold and combine into more interesting tertiary structures, which are kind of like these modules. Now, they can swim off and find other tertiary structures to lock together and form more complicated structures, such as this model complex protein structure. Here are proteins from a simple virus doing just that. Once enough proteins find the correct locations to lock, you get the capsid outer shell of a virus. Now, this is much simpler than coronavirus, but the basic idea still holds. There is a very complicated chain of processes the virus needs to undergo to assemble itself, and if we can interrupt that process somehow, we destroy the virus's ability to assemble itself, hence limiting its spread. But here's the thing, these amino acids are able to do this with minimal effort. Proteins are folding and self-assembling in your cells right now. And they're able to do so with so much more ease than anyone on the planet knows how. To build something as big as this structure, I put in a lot of effort. Whereas something like the COVID can form just through thermal fluctuations, or in layman's terms, heat. No one on the planet currently knows exactly how to do it. And origami is just one of the approaches researchers are taking to try to figure this out. As I was capping off the star, I can't help but wonder, how long will it be before scientists figure this out? Will we be able to hijack these systems for our own use? Will origami revolutionize medicine? Or will we be able to create origami systems comparable to biological machines? And perhaps the question I want the answer to the most? How will I be involved in all of this? The field of origami science is just brand new and wide open for exploration. And I can't wait to see what these next few years of my PhD will bring me. And I hope to bring you guys all along on my origami adventures with this channel. So that was my second giant origami video. I did make a giant origami flexi ball if you all want to check that out. And if not, well, I don't have anything else to say. So see ya on the next video. Oh, I do have a Discord if you want to come in and say hi. See you on the next video.